Welcome to another live lesson on BBR Productions. Today, we're going to talk about money management. Why? Because everyone needs a little bit of management of their money. But more importantly, before you can manage money, you got to know how much money you have and what are your expenses, etc., etc. So let's just dive into it. As always, I'm Thomas J. Beleza. So please like, comment, and share this video along with subscribing for future content on how to be successful in your career, specifically the entertainment industry. So let's get right to it. First, we're going to compare your monthly average overhead to the U.S. average. This means every state in the U.S. of the United States, uh, the average household. According to the statistics of our government, it's saying that on average, a U.S. family all right, cost is 5102 a month. All right. And by family, that could also mean an individual. Just so you know, this is just what people are paying on average. Now, this obviously varies from state to state, town to town, etc. So this is just an average. Are you paying more or less than that? If you're paying more than that and you're trying to earn wealth or get ahead of your bills, you might have to start considering sacrificing certain things like location. Develop a, a foundation. And from that foundation, it'll give you the strength to start utilizing your money in a way that you could invest into assets and develop some stronger foundation or stronghold to increase your overhead so you can afford this not because you are paying for it, but because your wealth is handling. All right. Believe it or not, on average, the, oh, well, the number one expense is household accounts for 33%. So that's like rent, utilities, things like that. The things that cost to live in a house or a, or a or even a housing area like a rental uh, is about 33% of your expenses. Next is transpa transportation, second at 16%. The reason is, is why, because if you own a car or you do public transportation, you got your monthlies, you got your uh, additional expenses, you got your, your car insurance, you got your gas, you got your upkeep, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you think about money and how to manage it, the first thing you have to realize to yourself is ultimately, what am I spending my money on, right? Now, we talk about this kind of uh, often here, all right? There's a difference between uh, wants, okay, versus needs, all right? Wants is your lifestyle, all right? <clears throat> needs is your overhead. Okay, also known as living. So if you remember when we talk about success, success is defined by making a living within your field of interest. A living is not a lifestyle. A living is an average monthly overhead that you can afford, okay? So what are some wants, right? Wants might be I want a nicer car. Uh, that doesn't mean I want a car. It means I want a nicer car. So there is there is a massive difference between uh, a car versus a nicer car, okay? A car, you can end up finding for anywhere for $500 to $2,000, okay? That could be a one-time fee, and then you pay for the upkeep. A nicer car will cost you anywhere from $250 to $600 a month. Now, what's the difference here? Well, this is a lease or a car payment. This is, I'm just buying a car so I get to point A to point B. One of the things that I learned uh, being around my uh, mentors who are wealthy is they do this. And I'm not even making that up. They buy crappy cars. Because their mentality is, I just need the car to get me from point A to point B. That doesn't mean if they are general, if they have wealth, if they have wealth, okay, Wealth affords a bigger budget, okay? It earns you the right to increase your budget. But we're not talking about having wealth yet. You haven't developed wealth. We need to have surplus of our earnings to expenses before we can develop wealth. So the reason they told me they did this is because they just need to get to point A, point A. They're not trying to 
you know, make themselves look good. They don't need to. In fact, usually they don't wear really nice clothes. They don't have suits on or anything. They just, well, who am I trying to impress, right? And they'll buy that. And then I go, yeah, but what if you have to go to a big meeting or a big event? They go, oh, I rent a town car. And the reason I rent the town car is because of the town car, I can get a driver. And if I have the driver in the town car, uh, yeah, it's a little bit, it's, it's an extra expense, but I've been saving 250 to $600 a month. I could afford that for the night. And now I don't have to worry about if I drink too much or, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm allowed to enjoy my time there. So that's the major difference between the wealthy mind and, say, somebody who wants to be wealthy, right? So the want is that they want a nicer car. And sometimes you have to, if, if you're, if you're, this is for people who just jumped on, the average monthly overhead for a U.S. citizen uh, living in a, a, a rental or a house or anything uh, is $5,102. So right away, you say to yourself, what is your monthly average overhead? Are you spending more or less than that? Now, if you're an entertainer, if you're in the entertainment industry, right, you want to be in control of your money. Money management is about knowing how you're spending your money. If you're spending more than that and you're like, I'm broke all the time and I want, I need money, well, you got to really start reevaluating. But you could also be the opposite. You could be spending less than this and still broke. Okay? If you're spending less than that a month and you're still broke, that brings us to what we were discussing before uh, some people joined the live uh, video. All right. Wants versus needs. Wants is lifestyle. Needs is overhead or living, right? A want would be I want a nicer car. A need is, well, I need a car. Okay. And the difference between this is I need a car. I'm going to pay $500,000 to $2,000 for a car that is just going to get me from A to B. A nicer car will cost you $250 to $600 a month because it's a lease or, or whatever the case may be. Maybe you're paying for your loan, okay? The wealthy, as I was taught, is they focus on just getting a car that's crappy. Uh, it, crappy to the point, it drives, you know? One, one, one of the cars I owned for like four or five years, uh, I only paid like $1,500 for it, all right? And that $1,500 lasted me forever, all right? I have another car that I paid $1,200, and that lasted me for two to three years. But i rather spend that kind of money for two or three years, right, or even five years, than spend this kind of money. Because if I, if I, don't, really, I don't really have this money if I can't create a surplus. If what I'm bringing in is just paying for what I have, paying for my wants, I'm not able to utilize that money. The secret to wealth is spend less than you save. But just because you earn doesn't mean you should spend, all right? So that's managing your money. As the mindset is, well, I need a car, but I want a nicer car. So you got to change your mentality. I don't need a nicer car right now. I want wealth. So I'm going to get a, I'm just going to get a car, all right? And that allows, now, <clears throat> what is the major difference here? Let's say you spend $2,000, okay? 2,000 divided by 10 months is $200 a month, okay? All right, and then uh, the extra, uh, what is it? Extra 100 divided by 10 is what, an extra $10 or something? But let's, let's just say 10 months just to make it easier, okay? It's $200, all right? So now you're spending less than the, le the smallest lease for that year. So you're saving money right there, right? But let's be honest, the lease is really the medium of a lease is like anywhere from 350 to 450, right? So you're still saving money. But the difference is, if I buy this car outright, okay, uh, that's a one-time expense, one time, okay? And a lease you have to pay for, I believe it's two to three years. But there are there are different there are different deals. So if I, uh, so what is, let's just say 250 times 10 is uh, 2,500 for the year. I know it's 12 months in a year, but I'm just doing 10 for this. Just simple math. Okay. Now that means if it's two years, now I got to spend 5,000. And if it's three years, I got to spend uh, seven. Okay. So let's say I have this car for three years. Really that 200 a month is now much lower if I spend $2,000, because I said I had $1,500 car for, for three years, right? 
So this lease is going to cost you seventy five hundred. Yeah, I know. Sometimes leases, actually, old times leases come with like free upkeep, free oil changes, things like that. Okay, I get it. Like if a tire goes bad, right? But again, that is a want, though. You can't afford that want, so you have to sacrifice and budget. So you have a surplus because if you have a surplus, you can organize that money into security, growth, and dream. Security protects you. Growth is the money you get to start investing into assets. And the dream is that you get to afford something that you want. Now, the good thing is maybe that dream account starts accumulating enough money monthly or quarterly where you could afford a nicer car or you could afford a higher budget because now your money is working for you. Okay. So this is, this is the difference, right? When you look at it in the long run, you just spent $7,500 instead of $2,000. And that's the big, that's the big. So now even if we did, right? So uh, my point is, want costs a lot of money. Need is the minimum requirement just to afford something you need. It's the same thing with, um, here's an example. All right. Let's talk about something a little a little less expensive, but adds up. Okay, a want would be I want to eat uh, uh, eggs, egg Sammy. Okay, egg Sammy in the morning plus a drink, five dollars. All right, but I don't I don't want to I don't want to make the food. I want to go get the food, so I'm going to go to the deli. So this is a deli. Okay. That's the deli. Now, what makes an egg sandwich? Well, two eggs, right? Maybe, uh, let's just say, uh, cheese. Let's just go for the cheapest version of it, right? So, eggs, cheese, bread. Okay, and I got a soda. That's just breakfast. All right, so what's five times uh, seven? It's 35. So, we know that this is going to cost. Seven days equals $35 a week. Okay. Now, I buy eggs at the store, okay? And my eggs, uh, it's 6, uh, 12, you get uh, 18. So I get 18 eggs for $5.99. Already, already, it actually is cheaper. Already, because this is five ninety nine for eighteen eggs, where this is five dollars for two eggs. I mean, there's a couple other things, but you'll see. Okay, and then uh, I get bread. I'll get uh, a loaf of bread. Okay, so one loaf. Okay, and that'll be, I think it's three ninety nine for my bread because I get potato bread. All right. How many sandwiches can I get out of a loaf of bread? Right? According to this, uh, it's two. This this will get me nine. Nine, because what's two divided by eighteen, right? Yeah. Okay. And the loaf, I think it's uh, let's see, two, one, two, three. I oh, know. Let's say it fits the nine. Just, I think it does. I think it does. <clears throat> All right, because it's a loaf of bread. You get a bunch of bread. Okay. Uh, cheese. All right. I'll get one thing of provolone. Prove. Okay. And I and I believe that cost. Uh, I think that's three ninety nine as well. Okay. And that'll get me more than nine. That'll get me nine plus because I only use a couple slices. Right? Um, and then I get soda. Right. So I'll get uh, even even if I got one case of a twelve pack. Okay. And that's uh, five ninety nine. Okay. How many sodas is that? It's twelve. So I get I I can get nine plus. All right. So let's look at this. Let's look at this. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's just make this six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen and six is twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Okay. So. For twenty dollars, I'm getting nine. I just got nine meals for twenty dollars. Okay, 
I could even, I can make it crazier if I really wanted to, right? I could say, well, I'm just going to do one egg, right? I can, I can sacrifice even more and ration off and do one egg. And now, uh, you know, I'm, get, I'm getting 18 sandwiches, right? The loaf of bread, I believe, is nine plus. But even if it's nine, okay? And the provolone, there's so many pro slices of provolone because I, I get the deluxe box, right? And then I get the 12-pack of soda. Boom. 20 bucks, all right? Compared to 35 for seven days. So not only do I get two extra days, but I'm saving $15. The difference between the want is I don't want to cook. I don't want to cook. So I want somebody else to make it. So I'm going to spend $5. All right. This also costs time of travel. So let's say you have to drive to the deli. That's gas. That's, that's use of car. Let's say I have to walk to the deli. That's me walking there and walking back. And you say, well, you got to take time to cook. It takes me less than five minutes. <laughs> Uh, make my sandwiches 10 if I'm going slow okay but if you have to walk there and it takes 10 minutes or f let's say it takes five minutes then it takes them five to ten minutes to cook so that's 15 then you gotta walk back it's an extra five minutes so that's 20 minutes times uh, seven that's 140 minutes which is uh, two hours and 20 minutes all right so if I just take 10 minutes, 10 times 9 equals 90, I am still saving a ridiculous. So not only am I managing my time better, I'm managing my money better. And that's the difference between a want and a need. And sometimes you have to sacrifice the wants of what you desire for your lifestyle to afford your living so you can create a surplus of money that you can now start investing that you could now put aside for emergency funds and your security, that you can now put aside for your dream account, which is your reward. I want to go on vacation. I want to do this. I want to do that. Whatever it is, that money is allocated to this. So this is, just, this is just eggs. And you're like, yeah, but Tom, it's not really. It's 15 bucks. What am I going to do with $15? But this is 35 a week. So what's 35 times 4? Right? What is that? Right, that's 12, 13, 14, that's $140 a month. That's just the breakfast though, right? Okay, and what is this? This is nine, so uh, 18, 27, right? So this is gonna be about $60, maybe maybe 75 with the, with the off days, because you get nine. So 75, you're saving half in the long run. All right, it's because you get more days out of your groceries. So this is grocery shopping. This is going to a deli, right? It's little things like this, all right, where you change your brain to take back control over how you are spending money. If you are spending more than that a month, you def and you and you're just barely getting, a, or you're just barely surviving, or more importantly. You're not even surviving. You're just robbing from Peter to pay Paul. This, you, you shouldn't be thinking, I need to make more money. I need to make more money is fueling the want, lifestyle, desire. You're used to and or comfortable or want to see yourself in a specific lifestyle. For example, you might be like, well, I want, so I want the best cars. I want the best shoes. I want the best uh, electronics. I, I need the new iPhone every time it comes out. I need the Xbox. I need the PlayStation. I need the... I need the best computer. I need to, right? You start saying, what do you need? I, but they're not needs. They're wants. You want the best car. You want the best electronics. You want the best computer. You want the best Xbox, the best PlayStation. You want to look good. So you buy the best clothes, right? So now you're paying something like this. That is you. You have to take responsibility, change your brain, and say, wait a minute. How much do I make? If I am just barely paying that, you know you're at least, let's say you're making $5,000, right? I mean the 5100 If you're just barely making that, your brain should be thinking, let me look at my expenses and start cutting down. And since housing is one of the most expensive, you should start saying, well, let's start with that. Can I change my rent or mortgage? Let's say you can't. Well, 
do I pay for the do I pay for cable and internet? Do I need cable? Or do I want cable? I definitely need the internet. It connects me to the world. Let me let me see if I can get a better deal with just internet because then I could also watch television through the internet. Do I need to have Hulu, Netflix, Prime, Disney, HBO Max, show do I need those? Or do I want those? And by the way, you only have to sacrifice until your money is organized and starts developing wealth, which creates an increase of overhead. Because ultimately, you should be able to afford 18 months of overhead. Okay? All right? And your safety net, this is overhead, overhead. Your safety net should be a minimum of three to six months. What does that mean? If you watch the channel, uh, safety net. If you watch the channel, you'll know safety net is the uh, the threshold in which you're allowed to utilize the 60-40 split. Okay? okay? What that means is anytime I bring in $100, if I have three to six months, it's your choice. I usually t choose three at this point. If you have three months or more in your foundation, your overhead foundation, Okay, you're allowed to take that money. Let's say you bring in a hundred dollars. You take a hundred dollars and you put sixty dollars, okay, into your security, growth, and dream. You could even put some in emergency fund, and then the other forty dollars you put back into your overhead. All right. So if you have at least three months saved <clears throat> in your overhead uh, foundation. Every time you make money, you can start separating. Why do we separate into security, growth, and dream, and emergency? Emergency is just in case something crazy goes, happens. Security is if you go get broke and you need to start over. That's what that is. That's your parachute money, okay? Uh, the growth is that you can start investing that money. So you, this overhead should not afford you overhead uh, uh, of investing. You're not supposed to invest the money that affords you a living, okay? But the surplus of money you earn because you have saved. That's the big thing. You have saved. You don't have to save forever. You only have to save until you have at least 18 months before you start making real moves, okay? As an entertainer, too. All right? But as long as you have the three to six month safety net, your choice, while you're developing your foundation, you can take money and just do 40% of whatever you earn into the foundation to keep it growing. And then another 60% to start developing your three needs of purpose. The purpose fuels your purpose or your wants. All right? But anyway, so let's say you have this, uh, right? And you say, all right, after I did everything, you know what? Even if I break away, uh, even if I just grocery shop, even if I, uh, I get rid of my car so I don't have my lease anymore and I, I just buy a car, after everything's said and done, I'm still spending, let's say I'm still spending $3,500. All right? The big difference here, though, all right, the major difference, okay, in this situation is look how much money you're actually making now, right? Because, <clears throat> uh, 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 is that 20, like 15, it's 1400 something, $1,400 you're making, which is the surplus. You're making $1,400. And you might say, well, that's not enough. I'm killing myself to make this kind of money. So, I, I, how do I make more? Well, you shouldn't have to make more. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be like, well, I have to go work more hours. No. No, you don't have to work more hours. You're already making this crazy amount of money. If you're making enough money to just afford what you have, first start thinking about how you can reduce what it is you spend. Before you start saying, let me trade more time to recoup income, Start thinking about how do I start subtracting expenses first. The other thing is you might be living in a, an apartment that is $3,000 a month. I lived in an apartment, I, well, in Brooklyn. I almost rented an apartment. It was going to be $3,000. It was not. A, it was a two-bedroom. Expensive. Expensive. Instead, I moved to another area where I have a three-bedroom, three floors, including a basement, a living area and an upstairs, okay? And I pay $1,000 a month. And it's like, yeah, but why would you do that? 
Well, because I always want to create a surplus. Because as long as I'm creating a surplus, I can put my money into my system. And my system allows me to invest into my life and my purpose. So now I don't pay for my rent. My businesses pay for the rent. My assets pay for my rent. My, my surplus pays for the rent. I'm not going out and being like, oh, I got to trade 40 hours a week for a job I hate. No, I get to do the things I love, like this. I get to uh, write. I get to work with other clients and consult. I get to help on projects. I get to act, do comedy, whatever I want, because I can say yes to that, because I can afford the right to do that, because I created the surplus, and I deleted my wants. Now, does that mean I don't give in to my wants? No. When my dream account reaches a certain point, I'll buy something that I'm like, oh, let me get that, right? The other thing is my living is a lot higher than it used to be. Of course, and I'll show you that real quick, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, because this is all about just changing your brain to look at what you are spending versus how to reduce what you spend first before you add hours to your work. Because a lot of people, they think, if I work more hours or make more money per hour, I can afford my living. That's not true. You're trying to afford your lifestyle. So to afford your living, you have to reduce expenses first. And sometimes you have to move to a state that you might not be happy. You, maybe you don't want to live in, say, uh, Virginia or South Carolina. Maybe you want to be an actor, a writer, a musician, or whatever the case may be. But you need that 18 months of overhead. You need it. So even if you're going to live in the city or outside the city or near the city of New York or even L.A., go somewhere where you can afford, where you have a massive surplus. Save up 18 months of what it would cost you per month to live in the area that you want to live. That is your startup capital for your business. Your business is, I am an actor, I am a writer, I am a musician, I am a whatever. Okay. Once you have that, now you can go into that world. But before you even get to that world, while you're saving up that money, okay, you're building relationships, you're networking through the internet, you're de developing your brand, you're, who are you, what, what do you stand for? You're starting to get involved as best you can with foundations or causes. You're doing your research to learn the industry. This is before you act. You don't start acting and hoping you succeed. You don't start doing music and hoping you succeed. No one opens a business and goes, I hope I succeed. They sacrifice, <laughs> and they have a game plan, and they know what they're doing. You can look anybody that's ever been successful. Okay, where was I? All right. So, uh, oh, this is, this is how you increase your budget, okay? Let's say I'm going to use really easy numbers, okay? Let's say $1,000 is your monthly average overhead. Monthly average overhead, okay? I know it's not. You know it's not. This is just okay. I need 18 months, okay, for my foundation account. So what is that? That's eighteen thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. So if I have eighteen thousand dollars in my monthly uh, foundation, right? This is my monthly overhead foundation, right? If I have eighteen thousand dollars. I know I have my foundation secure. So I could start working. I could start jumping into that industry. I could start doing stuff. And I no longer have to work a day job because my life is being afforded. I can cover my monthly average overhead, which gives me the freedom to say yes to volunteer and help and get involved. Because the more we give to the industry we're interested in, the more the industry gives back to us. So that means you're going to be spending this money. But you're also going to be eventually earning money within the Within 12 months, you are absolutely going to be making money because you're going to get in the industry. Because once you're in the industry, you start doing jobs you wouldn't necessarily. This is the problem with actors. Actors are like, well, I want to be a lead. So I don't really I don't want to do anything unless I'm doing the lead. But it's like, no, you should be working as a PA. You should be working as this. You should begin. Just get into the industry doing jobs you hate to be in the industry you love so you could develop relationships and your market value, like who you are and your, your value sets. And then those relationships lead to bigger and better opportunities. And people go, no, I'm not going to do that. But they'll work a job they literally hate that pays crap, hoping that they could just get their big break. 
That's not entrepreneurial brain. That's a hopeful artist brain, and that's dangerous. Why do you work at a supermarket that you hate? Because it pays my bills. Well, if you could afford your overhead, now you could work at a job you hate within your industry so you could start developing relationships and grow. That's the change of the brain mentality. So let's get back to this. So this is how I increase my overhead budget. So if my budget is $1,000 and I have 18000 then I start spending money, right? But then I start earning money. And the rule is if I can get another six months over what my 18 months is because I've been saving my... You know, I've been putting 40% back in, right? If I'm putting 40% back in, okay? And that 40% will increase too, the more, the better jobs I have, et cetera, et cetera, right? So let's say, um, instead of 18 months, uh, what is that? Uh, eight, well, six is four, so that's 24. All right, so if I have $24,000, okay? I'm usually really good at math. I don't know why whenever I'm doing this thing, I can't do the math. So this is 24 months. Let's say now I have that in my monthly average overhead, my monthly overhead finance, uh, foundation account. This tells me I have earned a right to do what? I can increase my budget. So if I have $24,000 in there, which I know is worth 24 months, right? Okay, or in this case, two years, all right? I will just make that half. So I won't change the 24,000, but I'll change what I need. So now, to get to this name, same number, instead of doing half, I might say, um, I need 36,000. Let's say I need 36,000, okay? For this to be my monthly foundational overhead, all right? which means I need another $12,000 in there. But what I just did was I'm saying this is now my overhead. So what I do is I divide 36 by, uh, what did I do, 24, okay? So before I can go back, right? Let's do it the easy way. Let's do it the easy way for the students. <laughs> Brain is just dumb. All right. So 36,000 divided by 24. All right. So now what I did is I increased my 1,000 a month to uh, 1,500 a month. So now I, I can spend on my overhead, right, which is my living. My living has increased by $500. And that's what you do. So basically, 18 months of overhead is what you're trying to get to before you can start your career. That's your capital investment, your financial foundation into becoming an actor, writer, musician. This is affording your overhead so you don't have to work a survival job. But you can still work a job, but it now can be in the industry. And if it's going to be in the industry, even if you hate the job, you're only using that job to get into the industry and build relationships. Okay? But... If and when the time comes, you reach two years worth or 24 months worth of overhead, okay? You can say to yourself, you know what? I'm going to add, I'm going to, I'm going to divide it or whatever the case may be. And you could do whatever you want, you right? You just change, you just change whatever, you know, like if you reach, if you reach 24 months, Okay, at a thousand dollars a month. Okay, that means you need to have twenty four thousand. Okay, if you want to increase your monthly budget, right, because you have twenty four thousand, right, which easily affords you your two years, you could say, well, why don't I just bring it down? I'll just bring it down. I'll make it uh, the the fifteen hundred, which is now the three. Which is now the thirty-six thousand. All right. So once you reach thirty-six thousand, then you could you could just change it again. You could be like, you know what? Once I reach forty-eight thousand, I'll change my budget again. I'll change my overhead budget. So <clears throat> this would be a thousand. Uh, this would be fifteen hundred. This would be two thousand. Okay. And at, you know, as you can see, every time you add. 
you know, whatever the case may be, 1200, a uh, 12 grand, this would be a uh, fine, this would be 60,000. You're like, ah, once, once my monthly average, once my foundation reaches 60,000, now my monthly average overhead is 2,500. And you're thinking, Tom, that's crazy, right? Now, obviously I'm using smaller numbers. I would say this is probably where people are at. However, I have seen this. So you need to make 48,000 to afford 2,000 a month. It's a lot of money. It's crazy. I don't know how people do it. Actually, I do know how people do it. Anyway. All right, let's conclude. All right, so basically, the way you do it is figure out how much you are spending, how much do you earn. If you need a surplus, you start by figuring out how to reduce expenses first before thinking, how do I work more hours? Am I against working more hours and more jobs? No, I'm not. But you start with reducing expenses first. In fact, if you have to, change where you live. You want to just be making, you want to just be having to spend the least amount of money to get the most out of what you earn. Okay. Uh, when I was uh, 18, 19 ish, I worked three jobs. Okay. I worked during the day, I worked a midday job, and I worked an overnight job. I slept in my van, even though I had a place to live. Uh, I would sleep uh, at my friends uh, in between jobs. I would take showers at my friends. I would eat, and I did that for one year. And I had saved up enough money where I could quit all the jobs and I could focus on my music career. And I was able to take my music career to another level. I was able to retire around 27, 28. And then I basically was bored. I got into comedy, writing, acting. Uh, I started doing uh, BBR a little bit more full time. Eventually, I ended up opening a theater for three years. All this snowballed because I had the money to live on and I wasn't trying to, like, I need money. I wasn't doing that. It all started because I had the foundation, which in turn gave me the opportunity that any money I made doing anything. And in the music industry, what did I do? I wanted to make a living playing my music and touring. But instead, I made money playing music for other people, play, uh, doing studio sessions, uh, helping recording studios, consulting musicians, doing websites for musicians, um, roadie, doing roadie work if I had to promoting shows, um, putting shows together. So even though I wasn't making money in the beginning just playing my music and touring, I made a whole bunch of money in the industry that I loved, and I got to play music, and I got to tour. Sometimes I toured with other bands. Sometimes I toured with my own band. Sometimes I played with my band. Sometimes I played with other bands. But I made money, and I made good money. And there you go. Uh, same thing with acting. Actors, they just, they're like, I just want the thing I want, but I don't understand how, I, until I get there, I'll just work this crappy job. Anyway, so there you go. And as far as uh, you, you cut your expenses first, uh, once you get there, if you want to make more money at that point because you were living at the least amount, go get two or three jobs. What the hell with it. Save up that 18 months of overhead that it would cost you to live in the area that you want to grow your career. And then just do it. Go out there and make things happen. All right. Please like, comment, and share this video along with subscribing for future content on how to be successful in your career, specifically the entertainment industry. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer them. If you're watching this on Twitch or Facebook, go over and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave your comments in the bottom of those videos so other people can see them. And I guess I'll talk to you next time. Please good, be good to one another, and as I always say, peace and army. Take care.